What I found in the forex industry is people love to bash on other people's strategies and swear by their own. My strategy works and yours does not. But the reality is every strategy can work and it depends on the trader, not necessarily the strategy. If nobody made money and that way of trading did not work, no one would believe in it. And what I've realized the reality is you can have an average trader that can be profitable. You can have a good trader that is profitable and a great trader that is profitable. All of them are profitable. So all of them are doing what they set out to do, but there's also levels to it. So I want to break down that journey, for example, you might be in the average section and you might even be profitable right now so everything is going fine but i just want to take us through this journey of how we can broaden our horizons and open our eyes to how to elevate from average to good to great just from a very simple tweak which we'll go into today there's obviously many ways of taking you through this journey, but I want to do this one based on entry types. So when you start off in your trading journey, I'm sure you've all heard about the basic candlestick patterns. That's where we all began. That's where I began. The best format that we can do this is from using our market structure. Let's start there. So let's draw out a quick trend. Right now, I've just drawn price action where we have clearly a bearish price action structure where we are forming lower low, lower high, lower low, and then we should anticipate sells. So this is just a very basic premise. I'm just going to talk through a very basic situation. So let's talk about the different ways we can enter when price arrives in this area. We need to see reversal signs to look for that sell. So what are those potential reversal signs? And I'm going to talk through the difference in average, which could be profitable, good, which will be better, and then great, which will be even more profitable. So as I was mentioning, the basic candlestick patterns is where we all begin our journey and we'll basically say, okay, we have this supply zone. This is where we need to look for our sales. And what we'll do is when price arrives in that supply zone, we'll go on to a lower time frame. Let's say from H4, we'll jump down to M15 and we'll wait for a candlestick pattern, which shows us a rejection, which shows us price is ready to reverse, which in theory makes sense. We need to see that confirmation on a higher time frame on M15 or H1 to confirm that rejection, get the wick reversal, put a stop loss of that zone and carry through. So to basically just draw that out, what we'd wait for is, for example, a bullish candle like this. And then we would want to see a doji. And then once we've seen that doji, then we will enter our sell, stop loss at the high. And then we want to be trading it down to make a lower low. We can still get a decent entry. We can still get a decent stop loss. And if the candlestick is accurate, which is not always the case, sometimes you can have a doji and then price shoots up. Does an inducement? How many times have we seen that? So these are not going to be the best leading indicator, let's say, because that's what I want to call it. It's not a true representation of price. It's giving us an indication of what could happen next. And it's a way to kind of view a rejection from a macro. When it works, it'll be perfect. But when it doesn't work, you'll be confused into thinking, well, I did the right thing. So not the best place, but it can give you a decent risk reward. It can give you profit profitability and I've seen people do it but I think we can go a step better so the next way we can look at it not based on candlestick patterns would be the natural progression that a lot of traders make and this is probably where you are right now in your journey you've done baby pips you've done these candle formation ones and you've realized okay there's more precision there's better ways to do it so then instead of doing an m15 or a h1 candlestick pattern maybe you'll go down to the m5 or m15 or m1 and on these lower time frames, you'll use your market structure reads because as you know, the market is fractal. You know that whatever happens on the higher time frame on the monthly happens on the M1 time frame. So then you take your market structure read just like this, and then you'll jump to a lower time frame. Use smart money concepts, use structure shifts, change of character, break of structure, all of these things. And that will give you a better idea of where a rejection is. If you're trading off an order block, for example, or an IFC, even better. So you'll have a better win rate. So you'll have better precision and you'll have better risk to reward. So let's actually draw something like that out. So let's zoom into this area. So when we see price do something like this, what could that actually look like? Okay, so if we zoom into what that higher time frame, let's say H1 or H4 rejection looks like, if we can enter somewhere in this top region, what would that look like? So instead of relying on candlestick patterns, we go to more market structure, lower time frame traders, SMC traders, all of these things which have become very common and very widespread. But as you know, a lot of people struggle with this. Maybe you still struggle with this. And we'll talk about why that could be a problem. But I think it's a step in a better direction. And there's a lot of benefits of trading like this. You might have something like this where price is coming in bullish, coming into our supply zone, M1 price action, forming higher highs and higher lows. It might then do a build up. So what we're seeing basically here is we're seeing prices doing normal market structure, higher highs and higher lows and so forth. And then it's doing a buildup of liquidity. Then it might do a run of liquidity. Smart money traders are now interested. And then it might lead to a break of structure. So what are smart money traders going to see? They're going to see this area that led to a BOS formed a lower low. This area was the last higher high. So then they see the last higher low made the higher high, went on to make a lower low. So we know that we've had a bearish break of structure that did a run of liquidity. Then these smart money traders are thinking, perfect, let me find a relevant order block and they'll place the entry and stop loss based on the lower time frame. set a limit trigger there and then 
take the cell accordingly. So in this kind of modeling, you can actually improve everything because you have more precision, you have more confirmation, you've actually watched the rejection happen, you've had a structure shift, you've had a manipulation. So these are all great things. I'd encourage if you've been training for around six months to one year, this is a step in a positive direction because on the other method, the engulfing kind of candlestick patterns, you're going to be trading a 20, 30, 40 pip stop loss. So therefore, if you catch a whole higher time frame move, a swing impulse, your best case scenario of a full risk reward might be a one to five, a one to four. But if you now just switch your entry model and take the same trade, you take that same higher time frame trade from lower high zone to make a lower low, that same trade, but now using lower time frame confirmations, you'll have a better win rate because you've seen better confirmations. You'll know exactly when price is ready. You'll have better entry. So therefore you're going to have a better risk reward because your stop loss is smaller and catching that same impulse, that same higher time frame move might lead to a 1 to 20 risk reward now. But now you've improved every metric that you can have. You've improved your win rate, you've improved your risk reward, you've improved your accuracy and precision. So this is great benefits. And this is where a lot of people end up. And I think that's the good category. You've gone from an average trader to a good trader. And in this way, you can definitely find profitability. But I think there is a step beyond. And I think that step beyond to be a great trader is where you take this premise and you improve on it. And you take the same methods. You want to improve your risk reward, you want to improve your win rate, you want to improve your confirmations, and you want to make sure you're taking the best quality setups. So how can we transition this model from good to great? Let's talk about that. So let's take the same premise. Price action is coming bullish into my zone. Okay, forming higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low, and so forth. Then price comes to my zone. Now, what I want to see is then maybe Asia as a consolidation. Okay, so this becomes my Asia range. Perfect. So now I'm not only just using price action, I'm introducing session timing. And if there's anything to take away from this video is this time based manipulations time-based reactions, time-based movements, that is where the key really is. If you can find a meaningful move and manipulation and liquidity run, all of this, a displacement happening at a meaningful time. Wow, you've added a lot more context and a lot more precision accuracy that will lead to a better win rate, better quality setups, and you'll take the real moves and less likely to take these fake moves. But let's talk about that. Basically, right now, the smart money traders are in agreement. They're seeing that build up those equal highs that we mentioned in the last example. So right now, we're having the same price action. And then what you might see is Frankfurt open. So Frankfurt open might do an inducement of this. We see that little trend line that was building. Frankfurt open, it does an inducement of that level, uses that run of liquidity that it just grabbed, mitigating this demand area, for example, grabbing some liquidity right here, did the inducement and then shoots out. Now that's Frankfurt open movement has done that. And it's now grabbed this Asia high or equal highs that we were saying that resistance level, double top, triple top, it basically becomes liquidity. This gets induced. We now get that run of liquidity and now we get London open. So now we've had our Frankfurt open confirmation and move. And then we have that higher high. So smart money traders that we just did in the last example in this, it's mirroring. It's showing the same thing. And then we come down and we see the same reaction. The same thing we saw from the previous example. We had buildup of liquidity, a run of liquidity, and then they look to take a mitigation of something and then sell it. So that's the smart money narrative, what we just discussed. Now how we can take this a level above is we realize there's a concept that I have. It's called the efficiency of the pullback. It's a way to negate potential trades that look correct, but they're not correct. So it's coming to this area of previous demand. That's not something we like to see. The price can then come back up. And this is where the interesting thing happens. So the time-based situation that I just mentioned, we add in context of London open now. So we're having our London open. And what we see is this zone of smart money traders. It will become a smart money trap. So I made videos on this previously and, and there's a lot of things to learn about smart money traps and what exactly qualifies it. But for now, let's just take this as an example. What we realize is smart money traders are going to load up here. So where are their stop losses going to be? The previous support and resistance traders, equal high, triple top traders, their stop losses were all in this area. They got taken out. Okay. Now the new stop losses are here. All of the smart money traders, their stop losses are going to be here. And that's the previous example that we spoke about. And that's where a lot of people end up in their trading career. Now we know that the stop losses are there. What price will do is a manipulation with London open, for example, so time-based manipulation. They take out the liquidity of the smart money trap and then they give an entry type to then sell on. So that entry models, there's many entry types. There can be an internal BOS, two leg protocol. There's many types of ways of trading this entry models, but the concept is the same. We have a particular time window. We have a smart money trap. And that smart money trap was a fake manipulation. Now, certain traders will just say, oh, but isn't this just higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, and then rejection. And then you wait for the doji candle or the rejection pattern that we mentioned in the first example. Yes, but you can imagine in this price action over here, there would be a doji. In this price action over here, there would be a evening star or something or an engulfing. 
you have to realize the patterns of the candlesticks can lead to loss and loss and then eventually a win. So again, determining the difference between a good and a great trader is not how precise their entries are, not how good their risk reward is. It's about how many losses they'll take where it looked correct, the confluences misled them. Of course, you have a win rate to balance that out, but you need to be relying on concepts that are going to be giving you the most truth, reveal the most reality. That's what a great trader would do. Even if you have the same win rate as another type of trader, even if you have the same risk reward, is knowing the truth of the market and training the real moves. Remember, a candlestick pattern is a correlation. It's showing you what could correlate to price action. The smart money thing could be a correlation, but the truth, the causation of the market is time-based manipulations. When you are trading with the truth and reality of the market with causations, man is so much more powerful. So what we've realized is we've had a time window, we've had a lower time frame confirmation type, we've had an inducement, and then we target all of this liquidity that was engineered. We had a trend line that was forming. We had these breakout traders now that are thinking break retest, continuation, Fibonacci trades. It's, it's all the manipulations that are going to happen. But this is how you can become a great trader now because you've taken entry based on an order block, IFC, whatever over here, stop loss potentially there. So your stop loss can be three to seven pips. And remember, I've shown so many examples of this. Remember, not too long ago, I did seven weeks of public signals given ahead of time. All of them were on the M1 timeframe. All of them had a three to seven pip stop loss. All of them were utilizing time-based manipulations. I remember I publicly gave over 25% profit or tracked on my Twitter. So it's not a case of this doesn't work. It's just a case of going through the evolution of average trader, which can be profitable, not to bash on them. Good trader, which can be profitable, not to bash on them. Then there's also a level of a great trader that can identify the real moves, identify the truth of the market and lead to less losses, have a better win rate, have more meaningful moves that are trading with the volatility of the session, the real liquidity of the day, and still have a great win rate, still have a great risk reward, and overall, probably a better profitability. As you can see in the market, to take profit, there's not really a right or wrong. If you're making money at the end of the day, who is anybody to say anything? You're here to make money in the market. If you're doing so, keep doing so. But there is also virtue in understanding the market to a deeper level, understanding what the truths of the market are, what are the causations, what are the primary drivers of the market. And today was just insight in one of them, in what is time-based manipulations or smart money traps. But there is so many more when you get deep into inducements, deep into liquidity, deep into daily cycles. There's so many things to unveil that if you're just stuck on candlestick patterns, you'll be fine, but there's a lot more to do. There's a lot more to learn, which is why I've publicly demonstrated the signals and other things that I've shown you guys is to simply broaden your horizons, which is what I said the purpose of this video was. So I do hope you enjoyed this video, but if you want to see more from me, not just on my public YouTube and public Twitter where I make regular content, but if you want to see real day-to-day -day insights from me for free, I have a free trade club. I have a private Instagram account that is request access only. Yeah? have to request access and my team will only accept a few people per day. That's where I'm going to be showing my daily trades. I'll be giving signals. I'll do Q and A's. I'll do lives. I'll do consistent breakdowns. And I'll just show you the realities in a quick and easy format. But I don't want weirdos in there. I don't want gurus in there. I don't want fake accounts, anonymous accounts. I want real people and real traders and communicate with you guys, my tribe, my community, my people of traders. Come and follow me over there and we'll go deeper into these kind of concepts. But in the meantime, whilst you are waiting for your request to be accepted, what I recommend you do is watch this other video that I made, which will help make this video make a lot more sense because I will be going into details more into what exactly a smart money trap is. So go ahead and check that video out and I'll catch you in the next one.